Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. Let us have a seat before God. I will try my best to be as quick as I can. I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak in words to us and that it will make meaning in all our lives in the name of Jesus. I want to remind us, as you can see, that the title, the theme for the word, is the theme of forgetfulness. The theme of forgetfulness. Many of us tend to forget so many things. Especially when things begin to work for our good. When times begin to change for good. Many of us will begin to give credit to ourselves. Forgetting that it was God all the way. I know we will have heard people say, you know what? It was w if it wasn't for... The way I went around it, oh, I wouldn't have gotten it. If it wasn't the way that I had to, you know, just to do this and do that and do that, that was how I was able to. They, we take all glory from God when things are going smooth. And this is one of the reasons why I believe God is sending this to us. Especially at a time that the Lord is ready to not only bless us, but to establish us as his kingdom on heart. And may God do the same, may God do so for us in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Before we go, there is one thing that was written in verse number 8. And that is what I want us to use as in fact, I want us to use it as a point of reference. Because God Almighty, let's start from verse 7. It says, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Can you look at somebody that said, God is taking me to a good land. See, God took them to a land with streams. With pool of water. Remember that even in their journey, they were finding water. They couldn't find. They found one. It was bitter. Many things had to occur. God has to pull water out of a rock. And God now is telling them in verse 10, which is the part that we need to start looking at, that when you have eaten, can somebody read that, that verse 10? Are we with our Bible? Are we reading? When you have eaten and are satisfied. When you have eaten and now you are satisfied. Praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. What are you supposed to do? Praise the Lord your God for the good land that he has given to you. Let us hold it that way. Sit down. God bless you. When God do anything wonderful in your life. What is expected of you is praise. Whether it is that you buy a car, whether it is that you buy a house, whether it is that you get a job, whether it is that you, God gives you a good relationship, whether it is that you are able to take a step. You know, there are some people that wanted to take a step. I was watching something on the TV, can't even recall when. And this guy was speaking on the podium, and all of a sudden, he fell, and that was it, he died. But look at many of us, we will go out, we will come back, we will even complain about traffic. We will complain about traffic even when we are at the store, that this lane is too much. But we have forgotten that some people would love to stand for even a minute, that they have no power, no strength to stand. God is saying to us in verse 10, when you have eaten, which means God knows that if he gives us good things, we have to enjoy the things. When you are satisfied, 
When are we satisfied? When the things that we want begin to occur. That's when we're satisfied. You want a home, God gives you a home. You're satisfied. God is saying, that is not just it. Appreciate me. How many of us do that? You want God to make sure that your relationship is cemented. Your husband is not even loving you. Your wife is not loving you. And God make it happen. Instead of you to thank the Lord, you're thinking, oh, maybe it's something that my mother gave to me. Maybe it's something that my father gave to me. Maybe it's something that I put into the food. These are funny things that we think, not knowing. And then because we did not appreciate God, then that thing begins to depreciate. May we never depreciate in the name of Jesus. And what it, verse 11 said, it said, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his command, his laws, and his decrees that I have given to you this day. Otherwise, what? When you have eaten and are satisfied, when you have built fine houses, settled down, and when you have, when you, when your herds and your flocks grow large, and your silver and the gold increase, and all that you have multiplied, then, can somebody read about for sin? What happens? Then your heart. Uh huh. Then your heart become proud. Then your heart becomes proud. Uh huh. And you forget the Lord your God. And then you forget the Lord your God. Who brought you out of Egypt? Who brought you out of those troubles? Let's just leave it that way. I have discovered in this life that everything is possible only if you are able to wake up. But I've been sure somebody sleeps and does not wake up, everything is done. It's only when we can open our eyes, lift our hands, that we can say, oh, I'm supposed to go this, I'm supposed to do this. Even if the person doesn't wake, they will call the person at work to say, why are you not here? He will not be able to pick up. God helped Israel to do many things. He fed them with manna. He forced water out of rock so that they could drink. He prevented their clothes from wearing out. Imagine if God bless anybody here that the clothes that you put on is new every day. Like it's just out of maybe the anger or from the designer is new every day. How many of us will think of changing anything? But then we will complain. That is it. Thank you, my sister. That is the same clothes over and over again. But imagine, even with our changing of clothes, buying each, doing this, who gave us the privilege? Do you know there are some people that the clothes that they put on them in the hospital is the only thing that they can wear? To be able to take it out takes trouble in fact some of them will be crying because it is touching area that is not supposed to touch may god help us in the name of jesus god saw them for 40 years their clothes did not worn out imagine somebody wearing one clothes for 40 years and that clothes looking like it's new every day it prevented disease from killing them even at the time that they did wrong against God, God told Moses, yes, I am the one that is striking them, but make this, put it, anyone that can look at it would survive. But then, the Lord knows that for people, when we eat, when we are satisfied, when we have all that we want, many of the times we tend to do what? Forget God. But there is punishment for forgetting God. But we, before we get to the punishment, I want us to note this. God provides everything for us for a purpose. When you read that, I think we just read 14, right? I want you to hold it there until I tell you to read again. God give us everything do you know why so that we can fix our eyes and heart on him and not the gift but do you know what we do we fix our eyes on the gift 
and not the giver. We would embrace the creation and forget about the creator. Most people ask anyone that have the mind to come to church today, maybe for this watch night service, ask them why they could not come. I bet every reason is ephemeral. There's no spiritual reason. If it's not child, it is job. If it's not job, it is money. If it is not money, it is one thing, it is distance, it is this, it is that. But then, then let me tell you one thing. If, if, if somebody announced today that I have the solution, and you know that the truth, the first person has true solution to every troubles of your life, but they say you have to be there by 4 a.m. How many of us will be late? Knowing that this is true, it is not a lie, we will get there. May God help us in the name of Jesus. You see, by fixing our eyes on the gift, we would always ignore the giver. You see, there is something with wealth. Wealth comes, great wealth comes with temptation. And that temptation is what? Arrogance. You know, when people get so rich, they, they get arrogant. That is the time that they will say, you know what? Why do I have to go to church on Sunday? All I have to do is money that they need at church. I will just send money. And then they can pray for me. So people in this world ask pastors that prays for them. Prophets that prays for them. They don't go to church. They've forgotten that all that they are enjoying is the grace of God. How many pastors do you think will be, will be praying for someone 24-7? Even myself, I don't do that. Talk much of many of these pastors that we have in this world. May God help us in the name of Jesus. And when you become too wealthy, and you begin to respect the gift, you begin to adore the gift. You know, when cars become my baby, that's my baby. That's my baby there. And somebody just mistakenly touch it and you want to cut off the neck of the person. That's my baby. And then you regard not even life because it's your baby. Regard not even family because it's your baby. What happens is this. That the life of that person degenerates to the person to the level that that person begins to worship those things. That life of that person begins to degenerate to the level that the person becomes an idol worshipper and does not know that he's an idol worshipper. Some people in this life, when they wake up first thing in the morning, the first thing they check is the stock. Their stock. To make sure nothing happened to their stock. They will not remember to say thank you Lord Jesus. Their stock is number one. And when the stock is good, then they can say thank you Lord Jesus. Now, tell me, what is the idol? The stock. Some people in life will not do anything unless they get permission from their husband. Even when God is saying, this is what I want you to do, and the husband is saying, no, 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 no. They would go for the words of the husband and neglect God. And that's what that happens. The, the husband becomes an idol. Some people, their child is their idol. Remember, these are blessings that God gave to us that made us comfortable and now is becoming ruler. May God help us in the name of Jesus. And once you, once you begin to worship the creator, the creation instead of the creator, it brings trouble. Can you look at verse, verse 19 and 20? Just read from maybe 17. I think from 17 is good. And we'll see. Once you forget God, what happens? Uh-huh. You may say to yourself, yes. my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Yes, that is when arrogance flows in. Uh -huh. But remember, remember, the Lord your God, yes. for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. This is the part that we should always remember. It is only God that gives the ability to do what? Produce wealth. To produce wealth. It is only God. I tell people, do you know how many people in this world that if they ask them, to bring maybe 10 or 20 million to buy a child, 
they can give the person 50 million. Just they can say, give 50 million, I'm going to give you a child, you'll be pregnant. There are people that, and God did not even give them child. And there are people that are selling pepe that cannot even afford a meal. That every time they meet with their mate, it is children, children, children. They have maybe like 2019 going around. It is only God that gives us the power to do what? To produce wealth. To produce anything. It is only God. And that is why I look at people sometimes that misuse power. That misuse the grace that God has given to them. I laugh. The, the reason why I laugh is it is only God that has given them the power to be alive. If God takes that life, it is done. I, I am this. I am the shepherd in Christ. I am the shepherd in church. I am the state. I am the regional. I am the this. I am the pastor. It is only when God gives you the power to produce wealth, to produce success, to produce victory, that is the only time that you can be able to say you are anything. When God takes that wisdom, you know some people will say, ah, it's my wisdom. If God takes that wisdom away, what are they going to have? When somebody says it is my money, when God takes that money away, what, what are they going to have? Some people, is this this power that they have, the power that God gave it, and then the power will become like a God into them and begin to run their life. Every time they say something good, they want to do something bad to it. Just to test if they still have the power. When they say something good, they just want to test it. And it is only God that gave them the power. And this God is looking because most people, arrogance is what kills people. Arrogance is, is the power of arrogance. I can, I will. It doesn't matter. What can they do? Uh huh. Keep reading. And so confirms his covenant. Yes. Which he swore to you, which he swore to your ancestors. And all of these things happening in your life is because of God's covenant. Do you know? Maybe my life today is because of a covenant that my that God made with my dad. Maybe you being alive is because of a covenant that God made with someone, a mom, your father. God can make covenant to, to walk just because of a church. Just because of people that you are around. But when you begin to feel that you are the Mr. or Mrs. No Hall, what happens? Uh -huh. Go on. If you ever forget the Lord If you God, ever forget God by thinking it is you. You know many of us sometimes we forget God. We say, eh, I will, I will, I will. And then some people, we owe them ransom. They cannot function without us. We, they have to come and maybe bow down or prostrate or ask us because they function. That is when we are forgetting that it is God that gave us the, the power to produce wealth. And what happened when you forget God and you when you neglect God and you embrace the creation and you leave the creator, what happens? I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Aha. Uh -huh. I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. May we not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Sit down, God bless you. God will bless all of us in the name of Jesus. If you forget God, once you replace God with high or replace God with me. You know, some pastors even has gone to that level. People will come to them, they say, My word is on. I will heal you. Who made you God? I will bless you. They, don't you know? Don't you know me? Don't you know who I am? You are not Jesus. So. Eh? Once you forget God, that is what brings destruction into the life of many. Once you forget God, the person will begin to deteriorate little by little. That is why some people will be seeing some little challenges and they wonder, how did I get here? What happened? And they will not be able to trace themselves to see, okay, I have done wrong. Father, forgive me. They would even be trying to see, okay, maybe if I do this, if I, it is always if I, if I, if I, if I, not God, help me to, God, help me to. May God help us all in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. We know now that the reason that the sin of forgetfulness will lead to destruction. Once you forget, it is destruction. Once you forget, 
it is destruction. What you forget, it is destruction. But God does not want, it, want us to forget him. He does not want us to forget him. He wants us to continue to be with him, continue to obey him, continue to follow his commandment. And that is why he most of the time allows us to be tempted to go through trials. He said it, I think around that verse 19 and 20, he said, I think verse 16, he said, that is why you are being tested. God wants to humble us. Some of us are going through some things now because God wants to, um, we are, we, our, our upper, our guard, uh, we, our shoulder pad is too high. God wants to humble us. God wants to teach us lessons. Those lessons that will help us when we now have what we have. Those lessons that will help us so that once we receive what we're supposed to receive, we'll become blessed. Did you see verse 16? What does verse 16 say? 16. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Sometime, something your ancestors had never known. Uh -huh. To humble and test you that in the end, so that in the end it might go To well humble you. and to test you. So that in the end, you might what? It Hope. might go well Hope with you. you. Everything you go through, even the blessings, even the trials, even the temptations, is so to humble you. Sit down. It is to humble you. You are going through a trial today. Ask God, God, take me through the trials, but give me the understanding of the lesson that I'm supposed to learn during this trial. Many of us, that is why we keep going through the same thing over because we did not even learn any lesson. We need to learn that lesson, understand that lesson, and then move forward, not committing the same offense anymore. Maybe God is humbling you right now. Maybe God is humbling me. Why can't we just follow the will of God and then know that God is going to take us to a perfect end? May God do so in the name of Jesus. So trying times remind us of two things. Especially for many people that have God. Whether it is the trying time, whether it is the blessing time, every of our season remind us of two things. One, Number one is the privilege of being a chosen people. What did I say? The privilege of being a chosen people. Because what that does is, it makes us to know that it is only God that leads. And it is only him that will provide. Once you believe that God has chosen you, that you are a chosen generation, you are a child of God, all that you know is there is one privilege attached to that. The privilege that God is supposed to lead. And God is supposed to do what? Provide. If God has chosen you here, shout hallelujah. So, who is supposed to lead? Who is supposed to provide? How many of us is leading? Many of us, we are the one leading. God is following. Many of us, we want to do everything. Make sure that things this way. No. If you are chosen as God's people, you need to let God lead. And you need to let God provide. That is the only way that you show that you are humble. And that is the only way that the sin of forgetfulness cannot come to you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Yeah. And there is also a price for being a chosen generation. What is that price? We must rely on God's provision and not our own. How many of us here rely on God? Do, if you rely on God, shout Hallelujah. We rely on God on some things. But sometimes we don't even care. We have already looked at it. Okay, I gotta go to Walmart, okay. I go at 7 15, blah blah blah. We will not say God's willing. And then tomorrow poor, poor, we woke up, we will not even pray to God. Same thing. We go to Walmart, we come back. It is only God that gives us the power to produce wealth. And because you are chosen, there's a price. The price is for you to honor God. Rely on God alone. Is the only provider, is the only protector, is the only peace giver. If any of those three things is taken away from man, man will become doubt. I pray that God will continue to be with us in the name of Jesus. I want you, whenever you feel that it is impossible for you to remember God, remember that your life is a privilege and there's a price you have to pay for it. Your life is a privilege. Your being chosen is a privilege. Your being here is a privilege. And the price to pay for it is to honor the person that has given you 
all of those things that you enjoy. The price that you pay is to be humble before him so that he can do more. Arrogance cannot help any. Self-centeredness cannot help any. Ignoring God's call cannot help any. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. Can you look at somebody that said, be humble? And can you all look at me and say, be humble? And I pray that God Almighty will grant us the grace to be humble in the name of Jesus. Let us not forget that when you forget God, you are not only forgetting God, you are denouncing yourself everything that makes God, God. And I pray that God will not denounce us of great things in the name of Jesus. Thank you and God bless us all. Let us go on our knees. Thank you.